My name is Lee Mulcahy, and I am very grateful for many things, uh, for God, but for my parents. And growing up, you think that all parents are the same, but at first, but then you realize that, I realize I'm so grateful to have the most amazing parents, not only my late father, but this amazing woman, uh, Mama Sandy, as she's called in Kenya, uh, that has shown me hope and love, compassion, and a way through the corruption here that sometimes we get involved in in Aspen. What's your purpose, Mama Sandy? I guess I could sum it up by saying, I want to serve God in such a way that I bring glory to Him. If I do that, then life has been good and it has been worth living. Amen. What was your part in the Kenyan trip, the, the East African country um, on the border that borders the Indian Sea? I just ran as fast as I could to keep up with my husband, Bud. It was his dream and his understanding of how to serve God. And that was by doing water wells. In Kenya, they call it boreholes, but that was what he wanted to do. Why, why do you think water specifically attracted dad? Well, he was in aerospace, he was in nuclear work, and then he started his own construction company. And part of that construction was doing irrigation. So that's water. And when he realized that we are very special here in the U.S., water is easily attainable. But when he found out what it was like in Kenya, then between Nairobi and London, after visiting in Kenya, he said, we're going to go back and do a water well. Uh, dad, I, I guess what I, dad knew firsthand though, he grew up on a farm in, in South Texas without running water or electricity. And there's not many people, you know, in the United States that experience that firsthand. So he understood, I think when, when, and you can tell the story about, about Yagen. Well, he understood life was hard on the farm. And I lived on a farm as well, a short period of time, but not without electricity. Uh, water we were able to obtain because we had a tank, but uh, he knew it firsthand. And when our table waiter, and we really need to go back and say, how in the world did we get to Africa? But you were instrumental in that and kept just uh, begging us to do Africa, and we weren't interested. In fact, it just seemed like an otherworldly thing to do. We held off for a number of years till finally, I think it was your saying, I can get you a really good deal, and Bud loved good deals. And sure enough, you were able to, and we said, okay, we'll celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary and do that in Africa. And instead of one safari, you did three, and we pondered that. It was like, you must have thought we were so old that we'd never get back. And you said, just go for the works. We'll do all three. So we were in South Africa, Tanzania, and Kenya. But it was in Kenya because there were so few people there. Our table waiter was from a, a village, and he began telling how they obtained water, and it was horrifying. The fact that, and it's usually the women, would go four times a day, take a donkey, fill up plastic containers, and do that until they had enough water for the day, usually four trips. But that just seemed like a nightmare to us that people had to live that way. So that was his, his understanding. These folks needed help. No one believed us when we got back to Texas and said, we're going to go back and do a water well. And it was like, but God began prompting people to give and money came in 
and we were able to return. You know, it, it, it's just such a fact of life at the public school in Cap Kasimbe, where we did set up a computer lab last time uh, at the, uh, in, for, the, for the kids. And was it, can, can you talk about that just, just a wee bit? The computer lab? Right. I, I'm just saying because all those kids take, you know, jugs of water, and, you know, some probably not so clean, to school. And it's just such a, and see them all come home back, you know, by the, the uh, dispensary with their, with their empty water. It's, it's sometimes like heartbreaking. The children in that, it was a, a national school, public school, I guess we would call it. There was a fellow in my church that, without my even approaching the subject, decided that he would set up some small Wi-Fi's and he put together, I guess you would call it, educational material for third world countries. Just, just a tiny little operation. And we were able to take those and put them in my suitcase. And they, if they have power, they plug that in so that we took power strips and we took laptops and we took these little tiny Wi-Fi's with the program on it then you and I were able to train the teachers in two different schools. And that educational material is just unbelievable. It has, with just a tiny little SD card, enough material. It would be like Wikipedia for third world countries. And with those lots teachers, of books, too. And oh, hundreds of books and every subject, history and primary math to calculus, everything that you can even imagine. So we left those teachers with those little programs, hopefully, and they were able to understand it and how to set it up. But it was this fellow in my church that s somehow found it on the Internet and did three, three different little Wi-Fis. It's, I think it's beautiful. It's heartwarming to see the younger teachers uh, coaching the older teachers for this you know, completely you know, unknown sort of thing. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, we're very grateful to the community because the community donated used laptops, um, specifically the churches, even Glenwood uh, Springs, the Catholic Church down there, the Orchard, and, and we're super grateful. How many trips have you been to Kenya? I will go in February of 2020. It will be my eighth trip. Now that includes that first one where we did the three safaris, but that's kind of uh, an unexpected thing. I'm 84, and I'm able to continue to do that as long as God keeps me in good shape. So it's amazing, and the people are so grateful that it is heartwarming to be able to help them. We have done, as of March, February of this year, we've done four water wells, and hopefully, after what we called a fact-finding trip in 2019, in March, we were able to come up unexpectedly with areas that really needed water. And that turned out to be a businessman that lives in Sotique. He is Indian and has all kinds of businesses, grocery stores and construction, et cetera, et cetera. We met him in... 2017 because we built a medical clinic and it was through his construction company that we obtained all the supplies. So a relationship was begun. Akshar. Akshar. And he's a and philanthropist. His? He's a philanthropist. He does, he uh, has built schools and uh, donates to many philanthrop philanthropical causes in Kenya. And built a hospital and has reconstructed a lot of the schools at the primary school in Sotique. But it was through Akshar, and it was your messaging him to say, we want to do what is needed for Sotique. What would you recommend? And we met with him, with another politician, and we were taken to Initially, three different schools. The big, first, sorry, first school, Big Five. Big, big five. five was the politician. He was in the 
the party that went out of control, not out of control, but out of power. He lost, he lost. But the first one was just one of those unexpected things. It's called Kipnosis, and it is a special needs school. And to see those children, 118 students, 400 on the waiting list, with no clean water, and the children soil themselves during the day, and there's really not proper water. Well, that one was like first on the list. The second one was a highly motivated high school where they placed like 16th out of 200 schools in 2018, 48 qualifying for the universities. And that was heartwarming. Again, they have 40 borders, but most of the children walk to school. And this was a Saturday, and they had all come out to greet us. And that was... Uh, well, that, a, and some of them were doing labs. Yes, there yeah. were a number of children. And they took us on a tour of the school. And then to see where they get their water for bathing for those 40 boarders was just unbelievable. And that became like the second school that we wanted to go to. The third school is called... And these are all public schools. Yes, they're all... I guess they call them nationals, but whatever. The third one was Somasek, and it was in a very poor region financially and also very arid. It was a primary school that we visited, and most of the time that we were there, they came, they meaning the adults and the children, and they begged us for a well, just so desperate to have water. So that was the third one. The fourth one we hope to do, may not be this year, but it was the high school that our Indian friend, Indian friend built called Akshar High School. And they greeted us warmly as well. They love to dance, and that's just part, I would say that is part of their DNA. So if they greet us, they're dancing while they do that. So, so if someone, say for example, wanted to pay for the uh, well at these at these schools because there's a secondary school there too. Um, could they do that and go on the trip to see it? Oh yes, if that worked. Here's what God did that was so absolutely amazing. In 2018, we didn't do a trip. We just really didn't know what God had in mind. And I have a board that works with me, and one of the board members is kind of a a Googler, I would say. He loves to get on the internet and just Google and find things. He found an organization, it's a nonprofit, that does work in Kenya. And we were trying to figure out where will the next well go? And that was for 2019. And it turned out that he employs one of the men that we wanted to put a well in for. And that man is called Pastor John Bett. He was the one that translated my husband's prayer at the first well. And so that kind of validated that, yes, he was a director for this particular nonprofit, kind of told us, that's okay, we can do a well there. Well, it turned out we also needed someone that would train the different water councils to make the wells sustainable, that they will keep going, and this nonprofit man said, I have the perfect person for you. He's from the Netherlands. He is in Kenya, and he is a trainer in financial accountability sort of thing. So with that in mind, we contacted, his name is Bob DeGroot. We contacted Bob, one of those God moments, I would say, conference call to him and said, Bob, is there a Christian driller that you might know about? And he immediately said, CRF, which is Christian Relief Fund. Now, this is the part that has to be God for sure. It is located in Amarillo, Texas. That's the base with an office in Fort Worth, which is like 20 minutes from me when I'm in Texas. And they do this for the nonprofits. They do it for half price. So a well, rather than costing 35 or 36, is 17.5. 
So that's the, that's the number, less than 20,000, and you could have a naming opportunity for your son or daughter at a... Uh, a spot in Kenya, in, a school in Kenya, in Kenya. And, and and give that legacy back to your kids of helping and loving others. That's that's that that is a small price to pay. It was so unbelievable to us. So we immediately contacted CRF, and their representative came and had dinner at my home, and they said yes, we can do your wells, and they did two wells in 2019. February and March. The other thing that happened, again, through this gentleman, Bob DeGroote, we said, Bob, we are he hearing about filters that they are being used all over the world. He said, well, Sawyer is the company that makes it. Great. Well, my Googling board member started working on that, went to the website, discovered that there is a nonprofit that has taken that Sawyer filter and built an entire ministry around it. It's called the bucket ministry with a filter and then meds and then a gospel presentation. Now guess where they are? They are in Texas, 20, well, more like 45 minutes away from me. So I've been over twice and we are using those filters this year in 2020. And it is wonderful. They last 10 to 20 years, you have to train them in order to know how to care for them, make sure that you're cleaning them properly. But that filter, you can take garbage water and run it through that filter and it comes out pure. So that again is one of those God moments for us. What is the most exciting thing that has happened to you guys in Kenya? I think it was the first well because it was exciting that we were there and it was going to happen. But when the water came in, we could see there were a lot of people gathering and they, mainly women, but men as well from the community. And they were planning to dance. And as I said, it's in their DNA. So the music started up mm -hmm. and they began to dance, the women, and what they were saying is, what's in your heart will come out on your face. And they just repeated that over and over again. They began giving the men walking sticks that they had made and the women scarves. And as we danced, we were receiving these gifts and the dancing went on, it seemed like, for hours. We didn't expect that, just never dreamed that it would take place, but knowing what God had done and seeing those people so appreciative, that was pretty exciting. And the, that, that was a, an interesting trip because the drilling company was a few days late. It was the rainy season. We've learned a lot. You do not go to Kenya in May because the roads are like mud puddles and the trucks couldn't get there. So they were delayed, oh, probably three days and you know, we've paid for this well, and we're wondering, have they confiscated the money and you know, but, gone you know, nowhere, <laughs> somewhere else? And that was else? A, a couple other people from Aspen, Sean Cox, Nanjean Windling, um, your pastor, uh, his wife from Baylor. It was a beautiful trip. I think we should show, have Jeremy show that, that beautiful dance. Oh, that, uh, and that dance, interestingly, uh, when my husband passed away in 2015, we had the graveside service. And that pastor who had been on that trip, of course he was there and all of a sudden, you know, he gave his introduction and then he turned on that music and everybody there knew what it was. And you know, we, we just wept. And I asked him later, I said, Jason, how did you know to do that? You know, you obviously planned it. He said, no, I didn't plan it. I looked over at that coffin and saw the walking stick and the Kenya hat, and he said it was appropriate. And so he played the music. The Kenyans call your mama Sandy. Uh, your ministry started with water, but you kind of, we talked about the used laptops from the communities of Dallas and, and here. What other things have you added? 
In 2013, there was a fellow from our church who felt like he was supposed to go. And so he just signed up. And we were there and we were visiting with the governor of the county where we work. And the governor said, you know, why are you here? And Greg said, well, I just know I was supposed to come. I'm a recovering alcoholic of 22 years. And with that, the governor just teared up because he has so many family members that are alcoholics. And with that, he said, we're going to put you to use. We will have soccer tournaments. I will set them up and you will go and speak to those crowds. Now, thousands came to those tournaments and Greg spoke to them, of course, always with a translator. So there were a number of tournaments and there were also newspaper articles, national TV and radio interviewed him. We had no idea that that was going to happen. So every year he has gone and from that, then we built a rehab slash medical clinic so that people could have counseling and help them with this issue. And also just the fact that that medical clinic was established and finished, then a team of doctors from Dallas-Fort Worth, Carrollton, went in 2017 and offered five days of medical help. They had a whole team, nurses, doctors, and were able to minister. And the people came by the hundreds because they gave out free medication. Well, and it, it was also during a strike. Yes, the, nursing. the national nurses strike and people that needed meds could get them if they were in that particular area. So God knew that we needed to have that happen. The other thing, way back in 2013, someone gave me a sewing machine and thought, you know, could this work? So another gal went with me and we took two sewing machines and I bought fabric off the internet for East Africa so that they would have the proper material because it matters. And sure enough, we made scarves, helped the women make scarves, and they were able to at least have those machines because they were donated to the community. So that began the women's training conferences. So we teach them skills, not me, but people that know what they're doing, mainly a, a Maasai teacher that teaches them beating. And the Maasai being the most famous tribe in East Africa. Yes, for the beating. So this year we're talking about doing something a little different, like maybe placemats out of banana leaves. And that might be something that would be easier to do and certainly to sell because even the shops in Nairobi can't keep them. They sell so quickly. Right, right. The, um, what could someone do uh, that's watching? Uh, how could they help besides donate a used laptop or uh, provide for a well? Um, what other ways? That's probably the most critical in that we do have funds for three wells. In fact, half of what is needed for three wells was sent to the drilling company this past week. So there, there's always an opportunity to donate, donate, and you can do that online, and we that's probably that the best way. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, it's just a way to help neighbors in a different world, in a different country, I mean, who are so needy and are so grateful. Because of their corruption. Right. And the government is just unbelievable. How did the 2019 trip prepare you for this upcoming 2020 trip? Mainly because of Akshar, because we didn't really know what we would do next. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities to do wells, but how much better is it to do for schools where those children will have clean water and also for the community? Because those are needed areas for sure. That plus the fact that now we have a driller, and, and by the way, this is important. The only fees that we pay during the year 
the secretary at my church does the books and it's, oh, maybe 25 or $30 a month. There are no administrative fees. We don't all have money from Africa water wells to make our trips. We all pay for our own expenses. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What's 2020 looking like? 2020 should be huge as far as what God seems to be saying for us to do. Hopefully, three, three wells for sure, hopefully a fourth. Also, a women's conference is planned, and those, those women are tremendous. They have done all of our conferences. One is a, a gal that was in Girl Scouts, and she was nationally known and also traveled all over the world. She's Auntie Anne. And then Rose, the Maasai, is tremendous as far as her ability. So those two are planning the women's conference. My pastor is going, and we will be doing a conference for pastors. And then the bucket ministry. We will start small and do 20 buckets, selective people, from the area where we did the two wells this past year. And that should prove, you know, a wonderful thing to happen. Plus, we will have our Bob de Groot training all those water councils, if they're three, training three, so that those wells will be sustainable. Now, what that means is they charge just a few shillings to have their buckets filled, just a tiny amount. But that's banked, put into an account, and then if something happens to the pump or whatever, there's money to take care of it. You train them to be financially accountable. So if someone was a nurse or, for example, good with construction skills, I'm just thinking of the Cap Kissimmee Elementary School where they need rain catch, they could contact you for the February trip. When are those dates? Those dates, I leave February 9th, and I want to say there. Return trip is like 21st of February. It's about a two-week trip. And for the first time, we are not driving, which is really dangerous, from Nairobi to Sotique. We are flying a very reasonable amount from Nairobi to Kasumu, and then Akshar, our Indian friend, will be picking us up. And not only that, this was a surprise. When we went over to his home in 2019. He said, I want you to come and stay at my guest house. And it is unbelievable. It's brand new. Gorgeous, it's beautiful. And he's providing everything. So contact you if they want to go. 